Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll discuss how to create stereo width in your master. We'll discuss the plugins that you can use to expand the stereo image of your master, the techniques used to accomplish the expansion, and then listen to examples of these techniques. So if you could like, subscribe to the channel and stick around for the full video. But first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. So first up, we have how to create stereo width in your master with mid-side processing. Mid-side processing is accomplished with mid-side capable plugins, which divide the signal into the mid or center channel and the side or stereo image. Now, once the signal is mid and side, you can expand or narrow the width of your master by altering the level of these channels. And one of my personal favorite ways to do this is by using a mid-side equalizer, such as the FabFilter Pro-Q3. If you create bands and assign them to the side image, then any amplification of these bands will in turn amplify the side image. As a result, the overall stereo width will increase. Additionally, this allows you to target specific frequencies that you want to widen or narrow. Typically, I'll create a high shelf filter on the side image and amplify these frequencies to make the air of the master wider and more easily perceived. Additionally, it can be helpful to attenuate 2 kHz on the side image with a bell filter. This will reduce masking of 2 kHz on the mid image, which is going to result in a more easily perceived vocal. Now, this same concept can be applied to any other frequency or instrument range. For example, I can cut out the low frequency range of the side image to make the low frequencies mono, in turn reducing any phase cancellation that would have occurred. Any plugin that utilizes mid-side processing can be used to a similar effect. For example, Saturn 2 allows for mid-side saturation of the signal. When using this plugin, you can make your distortion primarily on the mid or side image. If you want to amplify the side image, make the saturation or distortion oriented towards the side image. This will make it more perceivable, resulting in an overall wider stereo image. Now, personally, I like to use this plugin to pan both the bands and distortion. I'll make the low end more mono, the low mid slightly wider, the vocal range a bit more mono, and the highs slightly wider. Now, try this effect for yourself and see if it improves the width of your master. Let's take a listen to both mid side equalization and mid side saturation. Pay particular attention to how amplifying a band on the side image creates perceived width. Do the same for the saturator and see if you can notice a difference when the saturation is panned to either the mid or side image. Next up, let's talk about how to create stereo width in your master with delay-based processing. Although delay-based processing is a quick and easy way to expand the stereo image of a signal, it should typically be avoided when mastering due to how aggressive the effect is. Additionally, if you use delay-based processing when you're mastering, it's often going to lead to phase cancellation. Now with that in mind, let's cover how these processors work and explain why you should typically avoid them. 
let's consider Isotope's Stereo Imager plugin. Now with it, we can see that there is a delay section and a width section. This plugin works by creating delay between the left and right signals, which causes phase cancellation and stereo expansion. As you can see, this delay is small, but it has a large effect nonetheless. Once this expansion exists, you can increase the amplitude of the expanded image using the width slider. The main problem here arises from the delay portion of the plugin. Once you begin to create stereo expansion from delay, you're automatically attenuating certain aspects of the frequency spectrum. In other words, the same phase cancellation that causes the perception of a wider image will attenuate or cancel out various aspects of the signal. When this happens, you won't be able to control what gets attenuated. So, as you can imagine, this can be problematic. Aside from phase cancellation, most delay-based stereo imagers will expand the entirety of the signal. This will lead to an unfocused and washed out sound. For example, if you expand the low frequency range, your kick and bass will blur together, which definitely won't sound good when played back over consumer grade equipment, especially mono speaker systems. Now with that in mind, I'd say it's best to avoid this form of stereo expansion when you're mastering, but use your discretion in your ears to decide what's best for your master. Let's take a listen to delay-based stereo expansion and see if you notice any unwanted changes to the signal or if we lose any fidelity and impact. Last up, let's talk about how to create stereo width in your master with mid-side compression or limiting. Although we already covered mid-side processing, there's one more form of it that deserves some attention, mid-side compression and limiting. Mid-side compression or limiting is perhaps the most natural sounding way to increase the stereo width of your master. It works by compressing the mid image while the side image is left unaffected more times than not. By compressing the mid image, the side image will comparatively have a louder amplitude. This balances the relationship out between the two since the perceived amplification of the side image only occurs when the mid image is loud enough to trigger compression. This creates a dynamic relationship with the stereo expansion, which can sound more natural or at the very least more enjoyable than static or constant stereo expansion. I like using some of the Weiss plugins for this purpose, especially the MM1. Typically, if you see a compressor or a limiter with a wide setting, it means that the signal is being broken up into mid and side and compressed as such. Let's take a listen to mid side expansion using compression and compare it to mid side equalization to see if it sounds a little more natural or dynamic.
So these are our thoughts on how to create stereo width in your master, but what do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, you can send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and keeps you updated on all of the videos that we release. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or you can leave a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, you can send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.